In this video we're going to look at uh, simplifying a couple expressions using properties of logs and these will be the main three properties we'll be using. The product to sum, the quotient to difference, and pulling the exponent out front. So we're going to take a look at a couple of different expressions. So here's how some of these problems will look. For instance, they give us what log of x, log of y, and log of z are equal to and ask us to evaluate this expression. Well, in order to do this, we need to simplify it first using properties of logs. Now, first thing we would maybe want to notice here is that we have a quotient. We have x squared over yz cubed. So that could be rewritten as log of x squared minus a separate log of yz cubed. Now we have to get this all the way down to log x, log y, and log z to be able to put those numbers in and evaluate. Now here, log of x squared, we have a property that allows us to pull the 2 out front, and we get 2 log of x. Now here, I still need to split these. Now I have a product, so I have minus, and I will want to put these in parentheses, log of y plus log of z cubed. All right, those do need to be in parentheses because we are subtracting off that whole quantity. Log of x we're good on, log of y we know. We don't know log of z cubed, but we have a property that allows us to pull the 3 out front. So I have 2 log of x. I'm also going to simultaneously distribute this negative. So minus log of y. Now this will be a negative when I pull that 3 out front. So minus 3 log of z. All right, so we've expanded it. And the advantage is now that I can put in the values. So log of x we said was equal to 2. So this is 2 times 2 minus log of y, which is 3, minus 3 times 5. So we have 4 minus 3 minus 15, which is negative 14. So that's what this pro these kind of problems are asking us to do. Let's look at a little bit more complicated example and see what we can come up with. Okay, so here I have log of x times the square root of yz times the quantity of log xy squared. Now these are separate logs, so I don't have a property for the multiplication of two logs. Also, this square is outside the log, that doesn't, so I cannot pull that out front. So what I'm going to do is deal with these separately. So first, here I have a product, so I can rewrite that as log of x plus log of square root of yz. Now I'm going to put some parentheses around this because that's going to be times. Now again, I have a product. So inside the parentheses, I'm going to do log of x plus log of y. So I'm using that product to, to sum formula, that quantity squared. Now, we're not quite all the way down. This thing needs to be simplified some more. Remember, taking the square root of something is the same thing as raising it to the 1 half power. So I can pull that 1 half out front. So over here, I've got this log of x plus one-half. Both of them were under the radical, so I can pull that square root out front. Up here I couldn't because x was not raised to the one-half. Log of yz, which will still need to be expanded, we'll do that in the next step, times log of x plus log of y. We'll use the same values we had before, that was that log of x was two, log of y was three, and log of z was five. Um, last step, we do need to expand this one because we don't ha know what log of yz is. So we have log of x plus one half. Now this does need parentheses when I split it. Log of y plus log of z. Close those parentheses. Now this one was already done. Log of x plus log of y. The quantity squared. Now we can sub in our values. The log of x was 2, so we have 2 plus 
1 half times 3 plus 5 times 2 plus 3, the quantity squared. So we continue our simplifying down here. 2, this is 8 times 1 half, so 2 plus 4 times 5 squared, 2 plus 3 is 5. So we have 6 times 25, or this thing simplifies all the way down to 150. So we really need to pay attention to our properties. Those three properties that I showed you at the beginning are the properties that we're going to use in expanding these logs so we can plug in those values.